In the Hardening Your Home series, you learned about the defensible space within 200 feet of your home. Now, we want to focus on the techniques and strategies for managing and maintaining the space that's outside of that perimeter, which could include canyons. Starting at your home and working your way out, create the most amount of defensible space near your structures. Working down to the canyon bottom, focus first on the canyon's edge, then the upper slope. Next, the mid slope, lower slope, and finally, the bottom of the canyon. Focusing on one area at a time allows your maintenance to be more manageable. Reduce vegetation according to the prescribed ratio of size to distance between shrubs with a two to one or greater clearance ratio at the canyon's edge and upper slope zones. What we mean by a two to one ratio is if you have a five foot shrub, you would create a 10 foot space to the next shrub and would be accomplished with the use of chainsaws and hand tools. The further away vegetation is from structures, such as mid slope and bottom canyon, the more conservative your approach could be. For instance, you could use a one by one ratio with a five foot shrub spaced five feet apart from the next shrub. Plant removal may not be necessary to create spacing. You can thin shrubs and trees by removing branches and create space between vegetation with chainsaws and hand tools so that the branches are not touching the branches of other vegetation around it. Trees should be limbed up no less than one third of the tree's height from the ground. The upper slope of the canyon should be the important focus of the vegetation reduction as the flame and the heat intensity of a wildfire could crest the ridge line towards the structures. Reducing vegetation in the steep zones has to be tempered with the need for erosion control. We discuss erosion in more depth in video five. You should target non-native and invasive plants for removal first, as well as dead and dying vegetation. You don't need to remove all the non-native plants Cluster them into mosaic groupings like we discussed in the previous video. Create space for fire breaks and clear out the fuel. This will help slow the rate of spread and intensity if a wildfire gets into the canyons. Then work on creating mosaic groupings with native species like lemonade berry and California holly. With native species, vegetation management would be conservative. Preserving more of the native species would prevent less desirable non-native species like mustard from moving into open spaces. Lemonade berry and California holly are not protected, but they serve as drought tolerant, fire adapted species. These species provide good wildlife habitat, cooler ground temperatures, and stabilize erosion. Lemonade berry and California holly can be cut back quite a bit and still remain healthy. Thinning would start at the base and move towards the main branches. In this area, thin branches to create more space. This work would involve the use of chainsaws and hand tools. In some open areas, you can retain cuttings as ground cover. Cut up and remove the branches and scatter them on the ground, almost like a mulch. This lop and scatter technique protects the ground from erosion. Accomplishing all of this may require tractors, heavy machinery, power tools, and a work crew. For medium to small shrubs, using goats could be an option. Prescribed burns are another way to remove excess dangerous fuels, but you must first seek the assistance and approval from fire department. After you've done the heavy lifting, maintain the canyon annually. Again, tackling your canyons one section at a time makes it much less overwhelming. Maintaining is always easier and more cost effective than doing it all at once after everything's grown back. Each property is unique and can have its own prescription based on the vegetation type and location of the structures.